In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we're going to show you some of the basics in working with shapes. We're going to start out with simple shapes in this tutorial, and then the advanced ones that we have that follow, you'll be able to create icons, like the ones you see on the screen, or complex backgrounds behind text. There's a lot you can do to even design graphic objects by using shapes, but it starts out in a simple way, and we'll deal with some of the simple basics in this tutorial. So let's get started from scratch. I have my background photograph loaded. I'm going to click on the Edit button at the very top. And now I have my Layers panel on the left and my Tools panel on the right. So let's go down to the icon, which is my Shapes. I'll click on this one. And we notice that we have several options. Let's look and see what they are. We can choose between a rectangle, an ellipse, a polygon, or a star. We're going to show you how each of those are different. So let's start out with a rectangle. All I need to do is move the mouse over the screen, hold down the left mouse button, and I can draw a square approximately or a rectangle, and it will take on the shape of what I've done. We see the width and height. If I want them to be identical, what I can do is just click on one of the dimensions, and I'll type this as 495, press Enter, and now I have a perfect square. I don't know of a way to do that with a mouse. If there's a shortcut, I didn't find it. The other option you have is creating as many shapes as you want. And you notice when I created this shape, it created a new layer called Shape 1 on the left side. Let's draw another rectangle, put it here, and notice what it does. By default, it will create a new layer for every single shape. Now, they may look like they're the same on the same layer, but they're not necessarily. Now, when it comes to color, I'm going to change the color of this one from blue. Let's go to green and click OK. Now, these two are different colors. If they're on the same layer, they all have to be the same color. And if they were both on the same layer, if I change the color of one, the other would match it. So that's a difference you have to keep in mind. We'll show you how to create them on the same layer in a moment. Now, when it comes to the rectangle, uh, you can have a rounded corner. Let's turn that on. And it starts with a radius. I have it set for 150. Let's draw this one in right now. And you notice that's the result. Let's try a different radius. Let's try a radius of 250. And we'll draw another one approximately the same. And you notice the difference in the corners. It's almost like a circle, but not quite. So you can control the radius. There's another thing you can do. You can click on the From Center. And from center, what that will do is it will create the object with the center point being where you start. It's not the upper left, upper right corner. Let's click on the mouse, hold it down. And then when I draw, the place where I started is the, is the center of the object. And here, even though it says rectangle, because I have such a radius, it's almost looking like a circle. So normally, if I want rounded corners, I want small numbers there. Let's try it with 50 again, and we'll draw another one. And there we have a more traditional, slightly rounded corner rectangle. We're going to take all of these shapes, all of these layers, and I'll right click after selecting them and do delete, and we'll start over. Beyond rectangle, we also have one called ellipse. And it works basically the same way. I can either start from the center, let's do that, and I start to draw. And I can draw an ellipse, or I can draw a circle. And again, to get to a perfect circle, all you need to do is match the width and height numbers after you've drawn it. And again, it creates an, its own layer. And you can change the color by going to the color options. You can pick a color. You can take the eyedropper and pick a color elsewhere in your photograph and change it that way as well. So there is an example of an ellipse. Let's look at another one. Another one that we have here is called a polygon. Now click on polygon and you notice you have some other characters. You have one called sides. And that tells you how many sides you have in your polygon. You can have up to 100, which makes it almost a circle, but not quite if you zoom in on it. I start out with 3, and so I get a triangle. Let's go up to 5. Let's go up to 6. 
And if we go up to 8, we have a hexagon. So you can control the shape of those, and it defaults to what you used last time. So long as it's highlighted, I can change it and be something else. So that's how the polygon works, and this is how you dis determine exactly what the polygon is going to be. If I want something that's very unusual, I might try something like 14. And here we're almost looking like a circle. So these are some of the options you have with the polygon shape. Let's highlight all three of these, and I'll press delete, and we'll start over. Next one we're going to use is a star. Now the star has a couple of interesting areas to it. First of all, it has points, and it has a percentage. Let's take one as five points and 35%. Let's change it to four points. Now it's four points and 35%. What's the percent do? Watch, I'm going to change the 35 to 55, press enter, and that controls basically how long the points on the star are. It's thinner and longer, or shorter and wider. So let's try this again at, at 15, and it's kind of a fat star. Let's try it at 40, and it's a little more traditional. Let's add another point to it. Nice tools to create some rather interesting objects that fit whatever kind of design you have. So that's the op option for a star. Now let's look at the shape mode. What is that all about? Well, I'm going to create a couple of these here. Let's create another one. And I'll move it down. All of these, you notice, these two shapes are on separate layers. If I change the color of one, they can be different because they're different layers. If I click on the second icon over, that's add to shape area, okay? So this will be added to the shape of this one on the same layer. That happens to be my shape two on the left side. So if I do this one again, and I can move it around independently, but you notice on the left side, when we look at our layers, both of these are on the same layer. So if I change the color of this one, let's change it to a green, because they share the same layer, they are both green. And what the add does, it basically says, I want this on the same layer as another shape. We can also click on the shape one, and we can add another shape. Let's go from a star here to a polygon. And we'll change the sides back to something more traditional here. And you notice these two share the same color because they're on the same layer. They inherit the same options. The next one over in options is to subtract from the shape area. I'll click here, and it looks like we have shape one highlighted, which is our darker colors. I'll click here, and you notice wherever that shape was, it subtracted it from whatever shapes were there before. I'll do Control Z to undo that. Let's take the polygon and move it down simply to 3. And I'm going to do one inside here, because it's a triangle. And those, it made a hole in it, so it subtracted from the shape. It doesn't subtract from the picture or anything else. And if I click here and do it, you notice it doesn't touch it, because they are on different layers. So it works on that layer to add or subtract. See, there's nothing to subtract to out here. There's nothing to subtract to here because it's actually a different layer. Let's go back to my Shape 2 layer, and let's use the fourth one over. That is Intersect Shape Areas. Let's see what that does. If I click here on Intersect, it only keeps the area where the shapes are one on top of the other. It deleted the others. So only where they overlap is what you'll see. I'll do Control Z again. Now we'll do this here, and there we go. All I have is the green triangle. I'll get out of that with Control Z. I've cleared out the area. Let's show you the fourth option under Shape Mode because it's the most complex. I'm going to take and draw a shape, and I want to make sure the next shape shares the same layer. So I'm going to click on Add to Shape, and we'll use this one here, and we'll use this one over here. And we'll add another one here. It will all look like it's one contiguous shape. There we go. There's my shape. Now let's look at the fourth option. The fourth option says, 
Wherever they have area that's in common, that will become transparent. Where there's area they don't share, that will be something you see. So I'll draw one just out here away from everything else, and it looks like normal. If I draw one here, draw a rectangle here, where they share area, notice the shared area becomes transparent. The non-shared area on both of them is what I see. So that's the difference. It's a little hard to understand at first. So the area that they share will be transparent or cut out. The area they do not share is what you will see. So you, this area here and this area here is not in common. So you will see that. So that's what the last option does on shape mode. So remember these four options to the right are used on the same layer. The one on the left creates a new layer every time you use that and you're working on a shape. In the next lessons, we'll deal with a lot more advanced things where you can create some amazing graphic images. You can create super backgrounds behind text that you put on your image. These are coming up in the next tutorials.